Carbero, hey, Carbero, hey, Carbero, T-boy, they Carbero, hey. Nah, parum parum buya asum pasar bela zama hankal song tunga kati zama hankal suma gubetaba. Do me shiso kama za mili kati jala. The D boy danger man number varasera. Yale parum dite kali dey akin face. Ay boy parum buya asum to you come na. Chan zang ta ka zang chan te buam. Kama na chan sabi yale parum kaguli. Habi nemi tig halis agam te buni. Yale parum sugo kama da agin te guanda. Guanda me gin te gin changa hankal. Zangal zang kara pula zang kuli. Chama le tung dan kuli. Chan yina all my fans. Come on, the boy danger. Come on, you know Rap danger. Come on, ha. Rap danger. Carabero, hey, the boy Carabero, hey, hey, Carabero, fat money, hey, Carabera, hey, hey, Carabero, Araya na jama kaula, hey, hey, Carabero, the boy danger, Carabero, hey, hey, Carazabro, Carazabro ba, Carabero ba, hey. Come on. Let us be honest as Africans. Ghana does not want cocaine. So there are very strict laws on cocaine. We've stopped it. Once you see cocaine, somebody gets arrested. Ghana doesn't want armed robbery. Once we see armed robbery, there is something serious about it. As a country, we pretend we do not want e-waste. But we do not have laws to stop this second-hand goods from coming to this country. It is sheer pretense. It is sheer hypocrisy. The things we do not want as a country, we fight it. And that is our culture. That is, it's about business, about money. I mean, it's, it's the second-hand market in Ghana is very huge. This is a country where we don't produce much. Most of the things we do is import, trade, import, trade, import, trade. Now, as a developing country, people are beginning to get interested in, you know, Gadgets, an unemployed country, they don't have money to buy brand new gadgets. So there is a huge market for secondhand goods. Tarpel a lot. A day I feel repair only one. And at some days come, I feel repair like three or five. We know what we are buying. If we want to buy, we do not buy which one we do not repair. We buy one, the one we can repair on it. Yes, I like it. Because I want to have no, more knowledge more than the one I have here. So I like the way. I like the way. My brother, my brother learning. Mm -hmm. So I learned it from my brother. Do you know that in Spain, for fixing computers, normally you have a degree or you, you study something? <laughs> and here everyone knows how to fix computers, you know? Mm, I know, I know. I know. Everybody knows, they learn. I'm a musician, I'm an artist, and the equipment we use here, the old equipment or slightly used equipment that we use here is better than the brand new from China because I've been using equipment since from 71 up to date. Uh, we buy home use electronics and we risk. We repair some, we sell some. Sometimes we buy them untested. That is 
the rule of the game. Sometimes we buy it untested. Some people to test it before you buy. So the untested ones, when we bring them, sometimes we are able to fix them back. There are other ones too, they cannot be fixed. But mostly, uh, when you buy about 100, you can, about 80% can be repairable. I think as a country, it is not our priority. We've not been serious about it. Although we know it exists and we know it is dangerous, there is no concerted effort as a country in addressing this issue. Our position has been clear. The law is clear. Anybody who deposits illegal waste, you send it back. If you don't, and we take it and we recycle it in Ghana, you pay for the cost. And there are some nuggets of wisdom to take from the last verse of the Captain Planet song. We the planet here, you can be one too. Saving the planet is the thing to do. Looting and polluting is not the way. Hear what Captain Planet has to say. The power is It is we Ghanaians. If we know this is bad, and our leadership knows this is bad, what have they done over the decades? So we may sign conventions and, and speak about it. It's nice to put on suits and go and stand on TV. You know, e waste is bad. It is affecting Ghanaians deep down in their hearts, in their daily activities. What are they doing to stop it? Nothing. The leadership of this country has over the years closed one eye on that illegality because stopping it will cost them some votes. And we take human beings working together to resolve this challenge. If our president goes to sign something tomorrow as a sign already on e-waste, if it is just a convention that was signed in Geneva or UK or Thailand or Europe somewhere, my grandmother doesn't know about it. She's not going to school before. They are in the majority. There are almost about 25 different terminals. You have to cover the 25 terminals. But miss, with the misdescription of goods, you cannot even cover 25%. You cannot. If you have to shred a container, it takes you almost a whole day to shred a 45 40 container. And whilst you are in there doing that, other areas are free to do what they want. Now, the things are coming from the EU. And you realize that the customs, the, the border controls, the police, they all see it and they leave it and it comes here. It takes me almost about 12,000 US dollars to re-export a container from here. That is my country's money. That's the truth. Every electronic gadget you buy, there's a disposal fee attached to it. Who takes that money? When they impose these things and the things get to the Ghana ports, okay, the authorities of this country, they charge some tax on these goods. If you know these goods are bad, why are you charging tax on it? The, the countries that did the best, they had no natural resources, no diamonds, no oil. What did they have? fixers. They had people in Singapore that were buying used hard drives from the U.S. And, and repairing them until they were so good at it that Western Digital and Seagate, they built factories there. And that's what we want to see 10 years from now. A TV repairman is like being an engineer. You know, that's like...
They don't have the choice to go to MIT, you know, to become a rocket engineer. They're, they've learned to do something themselves by studying the textbooks and with their own hands, they fix the wires, fix the circuit boards and make something that somebody in Africa can now afford. Now they can watch the World Cup before they couldn't. Now they can get online and get a Gmail account before they couldn't. And you know what? In the end, the manufacturers are going to be happy because the more people in Africa that can afford to get on the internet, the more people in Africa and South America and, and India that can, af that can learn to have a Facebook account, someday those people are going to want a new computer. The government doesn't have the, the audacity, the courage, the tenacity to stop some of these things because it is, it, you see, once you stop it, uh, it affects several thousands of people. You, you're going to create a huge unemployment situation. If you go to Agbogoloshi, there are several families who, 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 who only put bread on their table through some of these things. They burn them looking for copper in it or one aluminum or one metal or the other. Any government that there says we are stopping all these things that they go is afraid to lose votes, is afraid to lose that constituency of voters. That is the issue. My name is Razak. I'm Ben Kopes. I will have no money, no business. This is your palace. Yes. This is his palace. You see this one. Uh -huh. Okay. Yeah. If I'm yeah, if I'm hot, then I will come drink. Yeah. Then my body water will come back. Uh, the fire can burn also. So now here we sleep. Yes, yes. You never get money to go get another house. Yes. yes. <laughs> we have a lack of job opportunity. It is our work. We can't stop it. Some even sent to hospital because of the cancer. Because of the got cancer on it. So they can't stop it because of the work. You know, when they stop it, they can't get money to eat. They can't even get money to work to save their life. For me, for instance, I have to do a work, which is what I can do. But sometimes we force ourselves to do things we cannot, which we cannot do. But we force ourselves to do it because of our lack of money or lack of job. That's why we are doing these things. You know, some even can, some can even work here till they die here because of, but they want to get money. They didn't get it at the same time they die. Okay. Well, these are uh, very young people who also work here at the dam site collecting the e waste because they are not so strong. What they do is to sift the soil and they would find some metals which they also go to sell and then uh, have some money to buy some food. And then it is weighed there. Once they weigh their stuff, 
then they uh -huh. paid some money. Another person comes to buy the waste and it is taken to the ports. It is taken to uh, some companies that would need copper or would need other metals. This is more or less the hospital for them. So if they come here, they will complain, oh, I have stomach, I vomit, I run, then you give them medicine. Most of them, when they come, you give them the medicine, they will tell you they can't afford it. So you have to give them the one that is, um, that is not costing. At Abagoshi, we found severe contamination of the environment around where the e-waste is being carried out with a whole range of chemicals. Um, and it's similar to what we've found at e-waste recycling sites in some other countries as well. So we found extremely high levels of some toxic metals, things like lead and cadmium, and also a whole complex mixture of organic chemicals. Now, many of these are put in the devices when they're manufactured. Some of them are generated when the plastics in electronics are burnt. Um, a lot of the chemicals are highly persistent, they just don't break down or break down very slowly in the environment, so they'll stay there for many years to come. And some of them can even build up in the food chain. So this whole mixture of chemicals is causing severe environmental contamination around where these e-wastes are being recycled. Somebody discovers a new problem, a new environmental problem, and you have to have a solution to it. And that's what the Basel Convention was for me. It was basically the international community's response to the phenomenon of waste dumping from developed countries in developing countries where there, no, where there, where there were no uh, controls, people didn't even know what it was, people didn't know the danger. Uh, and you had this problem, you had massive amounts of really hazardous, dangerous waste being shipped from Europe and the United States uh, and other developed countries to Africa, to Eastern Europe, and just dumped there. And people were, you know, killed. Uh, some people died. People got diseases. You know, there was massive pollution. Um, animals died. Uh, you know, rivers and wetlands and whatever were polluted. Uh, so for me, it was really at the time a solution to 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 make people aware of this that this is really a problem that it had to be stopped. My name is Ugo Vallauri and I'm one of the co-founders of the Restart project, uh, which we started in London in June 2012. And we've been running now for over two years for over 70 events just in London alone and approximately close to 50 events outside of London and internationally uh, still in the past two years. The Restart Project is a social enterprise which we created in London with the objective of changing people's relationship uh, with technology. Learning how to repair things and by doing that, learning more how to have control over the digital devices uh, that are multiplying in our everyday life. Well, the Restart Project was set up with a very simple slogan that I think is valid for people everywhere in the world. And that slogan is, do not despair, 
just repair. I think sometimes we, we underestimate the powerful reality of taking something apart, learning how it works, learning what the fault was and being personally empowered together with other individuals that help you to put it back together, plug it and see it working again. And in a sense, our attachment to that device becomes much stronger afterwards. And a lot of people end up struggling with things that they used to love and that they associate personal memories to, and they can't find a way to fix them. So they just put them in a corner of their house and move on. But it is so inspiring to see people uh, learn a new skill and learn how instead than wasting stuff, they can give it a new life. The problem is not telling us this thing is dangerous. Every Ghanaian knows that once you are burning these things and I'm consuming them, it is dangerous to my health. You don't need to go to school to know that, ah, those fumes I am inhaling is dangerous to my health. Immediately, it makes you start coughing. It chokes you. You can see it. You don't need to be a doctor. We know it is bad. That we know. <laughs> You see, we are suffering, actually. Uh, government has to come out to do something to we, to, to, for we, the youth, to, to, to at least uh, establish some good business or factories, to so investment, so that uh, when we get uh, uh, foreign investors to come in, they can also build something better, or factories, for this our young youth brothers to also benefit from that. Cables that we burn here, yes, you see, very well. What we did was took three of the leaders, the, the three musketeers, uh, Yaru, uh, Awal, and Razak, and said, hey, you guys, take four or five of these piles of wires that you were gonna burn today, put them in a sack, uh, and bring them up to Tamale with us next week, because we're gonna do an experiment, we're gonna show you something. Because it turns out that one of the laptop technicians is from the same village as them, and his dad's a metalsmith, uh, Sule. Uh, is Count Kamaldine's dad. And Sule had these ideas when we said, hey, we need to do something constructive. He said, hey, what if uh, we, we cut the wire in a way that it doesn't burn it, and my dad can hire some people to help him make it into jewelry, and we can tell people, hey, when you buy this, instead of donating money or having your taxes go to a million dollar shredding machine, that you can have a direct impact. And I don't know if it's going to work, but it's cool to see, you know, uh, an African technician bring his idea to the table. In the North, they don't have like ways and means to be able to cater for themselves, you know. Most of them you see here, they don't have parents. Some have single parents, some don't at all. So due to this, they, they were brought here to be able to work and uh, send some money home and also feed themselves. But when they come here, they find out that here is not like what they, they have been told or they have been, the people told them to, 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 to be. So now they, they, they are here and they are sleeping over here on this damp site what we call the e-waste. So they sleep here always, both 
afternoon, morning, and evening. They, they eat over here, they do everything over here by burning this crop. So when they burn this crop, they earn something small, like one Ghana CD, two Ghana CD, up to, let's say, five Ghana CD. Those who want to become mechanics, those who want to become, they want to become seamstress. You know, the boys run from there because there's no job in the north. So when they are here, the things that they burn, small, small, the copper and the rest, they sell it to make some small money because in the north, it is like farming. And if, let's say, it is not raining, you can't go to farm. See the house. My father won't sleep. My brother won't sleep here. My father won't sleep here. My mother won't sleep here. Me, which place I will sleep? Me, I no get room. Me, I no get anything. So me, I, me, I leave a crowd and come back. Me, I no know which place I go sleep. Me, I never know. Me, I need to burn. Then get money. Look, my parents, my fathers, my family. All. As you can see the flag down there, that is where I used to sleep, where we head into, where you can see Ghana flag hanging. That is where, when I came, I usually sleep. It was a place we used to spread, just spread a box around and then you get something little to just cover yourself, then you sleep. I stayed for that for about um, three to four months um, outside, you know, sleeping around this water. It was even deeper than this and I think now because you know, years has taken place, the place has been filled up, as you can even see, example an example of the water still lying down. So you can see there was a lot of water here and we're staying just exactly after that place. You know, you can see how bad it was as as then, sleeping outside, you know, the mosquitoes, um, side that they say, the smell, people used to die, friends used to die and it was something that was like um, running through my mind, my brain, I was, I was very bad and I was like looking. When, when would I live here and praying to live? You know, living here and breaking computers, breaking e-waste materials just to pick copper, pick metal. You know, I'm now happy today. I'm no more breaking computers just to pick parts or pick e-waste, but today I'm now using computer. Hey, Nyama, Kandola Yui, Mwarmina Zanga Yulunti Makati Bani, a co can choose in your lover, Abe Buarama, Dungura Nichang Yuali. Hey, the boy danger, and come the bone in Pabba Salima, some are you and see my cat to be in far. I will not so come on cool dollar. Hey, come on, my marriage again. My mama, Kazansi Kazara, Sanama, no, you know, Kazansi Kachana. Hey, the boy danger, man, come the pam, and do ring in Yamakakana, Yama, and Pabba Salima. So, you, if you think you want to do something, have it in mind. This is what I want to do. Even if you are not qualified, you can still go back and write BEC. You can use that certificate to apply for something. You understand? And you go into an institution to ask their qualifications and then um, their tuition. You definitely will ask for forms. Maybe the forms they say is 20 Ghana. And I'm sure maybe here you get money, maybe in a week you can get like 30 Ghana. You can save the little. 
maybe in a month you can go and acquire the the the, the, this one, the tuition. Don't wait for help. You can only like try climbing, then you ask for push. When you try climbing, then people can help push you. You can start with nothing, but you must try to help yourself. Yeah, in your own way. Uh -huh. Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna stay alive in the in the danger zone Too hard not to crack, nowhere to run I got no place to hide and I'm a real survivor I'm gonna stay alive in the in the danger zone Too hard not to crack, nowhere to run I got nowhere to hide and I'm a real survivor As a foreigner, you may look at e-waste from only what comes into the country as second-hand goods in form of electronics or even very old cars or whatnot. My brother, it goes beyond that. Go to the various abattoirs where we slaughter cows and goats. We use ties, I mean car ties, in burning these animals. And this is not a secret. They don't hide to do it. You see them just look for those old used ties, put petrol on it, set it ablaze, and put the animals on it for us to turn it just to burn, burn away the fur, burn away the hair. And this is what we consume. It is not only for the low class, no. The ministers also buy from the chobas, and that is how they, they skin their meat. Uh, it goes to the restaurants. It goes everywhere. These are day-to-day -day challenges of e-waste we are seeing. That's all the la boys do. All the la boys do that. Boys are great. Exhibit B. The smoke is exhibit B. See, cost to eat. Holy, sin, woman, the man. See, all our hands cut, cut, rashes because of mosquitoes. Mosquito bite. Mosquito bite. You see, when I went inside right now, the ant, the red ant, they were eating my legs, and that is where they sleep. See their body. Our body. Look, scratches. Mosquitoes. Mosquito bite. We want medicine to treat all our body. Mosquito bite. Mosquitoes. See all my this place. All is this place. Mosquito, mosquito bite. My body is aching. All you see is aching me. Ganja helps. A lot. Would you like to see us? We people will not get money. Mm -hmm. But I know mm -hmm. that unless you don't get money. Yeah, you know why I'm not going to get money. 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 Like how you buy them, low, 10 million. You see the one in the top? No. You see that building? Yeah, yeah, what is that? If I can, you go, you go burn them fast. I think you go do them. I would like to do them there too. Hmm, I'm going to do them. 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 I'm a government. I'm going to do them. This last week, Friday, one of them was uh, going about the road, picking the the those wires and and use computer stuff. 
So when he was going around picking them, he was knocked down by, by a car. So he, he didn't die on the spot, but the lady who knocked her, who knocked him with the car, have to rush him to our, our teaching hospital, which is Kolebu Teaching Hospital. But when they got there, the, the, the doctors over there didn't attend to him. And due to that, he died. He died on the spot. As we buried him, we have to send part of, part of uh, his, uh, we have like something that we call tradition. So part of the stuff that they move from the fingernails and stuff, we have to be able to send him to the mother, who is the only family in the north. The village that he comes from is Savlugu. So we have to be able to carry the remaining of the body to Savlugu for the family to also see and believe. Because when they see the, the remaining, they know that, yes, it, it is true, the son is dead. Yeah, so because we don't have the money to go through the, the, you know, the, the necessary procedure where he was not taken care of and he have to, he have to die. What I found is that if I went back to, uh, to Africa and I found one of my students taking a laptop and repairing it by replacing the capacitor, generating $700 worth of value in 45 minutes of work, I would see the most exciting thing I could imagine. And right now the problem is that a hotel like this one with uh, more than a thousand rooms. They replace televisions, you know, the big working CRT televisions from hotels like this around the country and around England. You know, thousands of working TVs because their customers want flat. Somebody like Joe Benson in uh, London sees, hey, suddenly there's uh, uh, 600 working CRT televisions. He takes them and he sells them and and if you go there, you'll find those are not the TVs being filmed with the kids in the dumps. The kids in the dumps have some white monitor from 1995. You know, that's what's being burned. But what's happening is people are reacting not to the color of the black TV or the white monitor. They're reacting to the color of the kids. And it's turned into a bizarre racial profiling of the best and brightest people in Africa. And this year, they actually put a guy in jail for it. Our business is mainly for reuse, buy and sell. We have customers for all over Africa countries. Every customer have their file. They have their passport copy on it. They have the company name. They have their invoices. First bit is 2008, when they start coming around. They now have a clue this business they exists. When they start coming. They're not happy with the testing. You will not have a clue with television. So environmental agency can't just stand in, telling you, oh, I open this container, a oh, cable of TV is caught. To change the cable take you five minutes, two minutes to change the cable. I can rewire the whole TV for bloody 10 minutes. If we will not use what we have, we keep on breaking down, we keep on building. What happened to the environment? The environment will get fucked. If the environment just really be honest and be truthful, they should go to Africa, force the African government to have recycle everywhere. Uh, people like uh, Joe Benson and others to uh, engage in the same type of business are actually doing something very sensible because they're making sure that people who cannot afford to buy new products, as he also said, um, uh, can, uh, can still make use of this equipment uh, and the equipment's life will be prolonged. But, uh, he, as a, as a businessman and somebody using common sense, uh, would not pay for something uh, that is waste. If something is uh, used and reused and reused and reused, 
and in the end, uh, in the end, there will be there will come a point where it, where it does become waste. And there he said, you know, when that uh, when that happens, there's no recycling facilities in Africa, which is also very true. The traditional notion uh, that you know the uh, legislation like the Basel Convention is based on uh, is, uh, to put it in a simplified manner, that everything that's used is waste. Uh, and that is the, re the reason for that is, uh, as I said, that at the time when the convention was negotiated in the late 1980s, you di did not have e-waste as a problem. It's not really clearly, de clearly defined what is, what is e-waste and what isn't. My, my vision, if, if that's not too grandiose of a, of a, of a word, uh, is really to see a world where um, uh, wastes uh, become resources. Whereby John Bessie is not the only person who is shipping used electronics to Ghana. So I'm I'm part of it. I'm one of them. Simply because the reason why I say I'm part of it, I'm one of them. The government charged me duty, and I can pay like ten thousand dollars or more when it comes to duty. So I see that. Day to day, it's going to take time for them to realize what we are telling them to do is the right way. It's going to take time, but we can't just use one day to force them to change what they are already used to. But to me, in my opinion, I believe them being the leaders of that place, if we let them know all these things and we and let them know the, the effect of burning, if we let them know that it have harm to them in the future. I think they too, they are human beings. They want to live for long. Five years ago, it went insane. Uh, Interpol created a thing called Project Eden to start to arrest all of the people who were importing televisions to Africa. People like Joe Benson and hundreds of others, my, my, my friend Wahab. And that's where we said, we've got to get active. We formed an association, Fair Trade Recycling, to try to create a network in Africa's tech sector so that they can communicate better to the regulators that I used to work with and say, T time out. And the environmental community needs to wake up to the idea of collateral damage, that by raising money in this way, and telling ourselves, patting ourselves in the back that we're the great white savior, you know, saving these people, when actually, if you arrested 1,000 Joe Bensons, if you arrested every Wahhab, you would do nothing to stop the flow of material into Agbag Blashi that was imported 20 years ago. most harmful thing is the burning of the wire because of the dioxins and the toxins that are created from when you burn off all the plastic to get the copper. So I thought that was the best thing to solve because it's the thing that has the biggest impact on the environment and the biggest impact on the people's health that are doing it. So the way the system works is that you put wires in the top here and inside there's a shredder that shreds it up. So there's a series of blades that spin around and, and shred up the wiring and then it comes out the bottom here um, and it comes out as lots of bits of plastic and lots of bits of metal. So that is then a big mix of stuff that you have to separate into, which is the hard bit. So shredding up wire is quite easy. You don't need anything too technical to do that. But then to separate the plastic from the metal, you need to develop another machine to do that, which is this machine over here. Shall I bring it over here or? <laughs> <laughs> And so the way this device works is that there's a pump that sits under the bicycle wheel and it pumps water into here and it comes out of holes up here and it also causes this, this basin to rotate. What happens is that all the material gets into the water but because the copper is slightly heavier, it stays on this lip and is carried 
up the basin and through the hole in the center. But because the plastic is slightly lighter, it gets washed away or out of the basin and into here. So then you end up with all the copper being collected in a small bucket that sits behind the hole, and then all the plastic ends up in the basin. That's basically it. <laughs> I'm happy with it as in it's a system that, that sort of that works, but I'm not happy in terms of the fact it hasn't actually been deployed. It's not something that's been implemented. Uh, at the moment, it remains a concept rather than a solution. So the key is making sure that money comes back down in the system to the person who is cycling. And therefore, they do it because they earn a lot more money, or th up to 30% more money from the cycling. Um, so I think really, they don't need to, you don't need to explain a technicality or explain an environmental reason for doing it. It has to be that you explain a financial reason for doing it. If you do this, you can make more money than you do at the moment. And I think that's how you can convince people to, to use a system like this. So, you see, that's what I'm needing to buy a house. This is my brother's house. I can get, I can get house. Put your camera down, pick Trotro, our local commercial bus. You will see many vehicles in the cry here. E-waste. Should I blame the white man? No. Who takes income tax on that vehicle? The government of Ghana. Who gave that vehicle roadworthy license? The government of Ghana. Who insured that vehicle? The government of Ghana. Why should I blame the white man who sits in this country and has not done anything wrong? So it's just blame game. You keep shifting the blame, but you've not solved the problem. Okay, so let's say it is not anybody's fault, but the things are still here. If we really want to stop them, why are we not fighting them? <laughs>